Okay, so so far we've just looked at variables that store a single value. So in this program, we're going to look at arrays that can store multiple values. But first of all, let's just say we wanted to store, um, I don't know, five people names. What we could do is we could have a variable called people name one. And we'll say that that one is John. Then I'll just do a bit of copy and paste in here just to make that a little faster. So we're going to have five names, sorry, five variables. We can need to number them differently. And then I'll need to manually assign my names. Now that's not particularly efficient. I've got no way of displaying all five names. I would literally need to do print people name one, close my bracket. Then I would need an other line of code, which is print people name two, and so on and so on and so on. So that's not particularly efficient. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get rid of that. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna declare an array of five names. And to do that, what we're going to do, we're going to use the same name, but pupil names. But this time, we're going to say it is an array. And we need, we're going to put a value called none. Now that's what we call a null value. It's, it's no value at all. It's not the number zero. It's literally nothing. And we're going to say, well, what we need is five of those. Now, just to show you how that works, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this program and I'm going to print my array called people names, just so you can see what's in there. So if I hit run, okay, you'll see I've got five empty val values. So, just take that away. We're going to need to ask a user to enter this name five times. So to do that, we are going to need to use a loop. Now what we could say is for x in range, and we know that there's five, and we're going to say pupil names equals, now we've deliberately left a part out there, input, please, enter a name. Now, the trouble is, the pupil names, look, if you, if you remember our um, example, we had five none values. So what we need to do is we need to put it in to the array. Now remember, the variable x will actually start at 0 and do 1, 2, 3, and then 4. Arrays always start from 0. So what we're going to say is that because x will start at 0 and go up to 4 and get bigger every time the loop goes through, we'll put it in at position x. And then what we'll do down here is we'll just cheat a little bit and we'll just say print pupil names. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this program. I'm going to run it. And I'm going to enter my five names again. So John, Mark, Susan, Stacy, and Ian. And press enter. And what you'll see now is I have my five array, my five names coming out of my array. So, the next thing we're going to do is that I don't really want the five values printed on the same line and with the apostrophes and everything else. So, what we're going to do is get rid of that line. And I'm going to use another array here, uh, sorry, another loop here to go through every element in my array and print them off one at a time. So, I can use another loop for x and range. Now, I could put five there again, but I'm actually going to put a function called len, and I'm going to say it's the length of my array called pupil names. So that part there will work, we'll find that my pupil names has five elements. So it's the same as actually what we did there. So that is exactly the same as that in this case. Okay, so if I press enter there and go to print, I'm going to print my pupil names, and I'm not going to I'm going to need to put X in there and I will close it. So if I save that and if I run that program, I'm going to use the same names as before. So John, Mark, Susan, Stacy, and Ian. And what you'll see now is I have my five names on separate lines.